Okay, so good morning everyone, uh, and uh, good morning, good morning. So uh, we are coming to the uh, grand finale of this uh, little Sutta retreat. Uh, so uh, uh, this morning I'm just going to do the last little bit of Sutta, uh, which is part of the uh, part two, and then we're going to come back to a couple of Suttas from part one towards the very end this afternoon. So we're going to look a bit more about the idea of uh, metta practice and how the idea of metta and the four Brahma Viharas, how it is described in the suttas. Uh, and again, the idea here is to uh, build up how to uh, uh, give rise to joy and happiness in the practice so as to provide a good foundation for samadhi. And also, in a sense, when we're talking about the Brahma Viharas at the highest level, it also comes... Uh, after samadhi as well. So it's, it's a, both a method for supporting samadhi, but also a samadhi in its own right, uh, uh, which is um, interesting. So it kind of uh, follows along the whole path, basically. Yeah. So this is uh, this uh, last sutta here is called the Vat Upama Sutta, which means the simile of the cloth. Uh, it's uh, actually quite a nice sutta. Maybe one day we can do the whole sutta here. Uh, but for now, we're just going to focus on one little part of this particular sutta, and that is the, uh, the Brahma Vihara section. Here. So uh, let's just kind of get right into it and see what it has to say. And this is a standard expression in the suttas, uh, so you, you've probably seen this before, but nevertheless, uh, let's have a look at it again now. So they meditate spreading a heart full of love. So this is metta in one direction, and to the second, and to the third, and to the fourth. In the same way, above, below, across, everywhere, all around, the spread of heart full of love to the whole world. So this is the uh, basic idea of metta uh, as, it expressed, as it is expressed in the suttas. Uh, and you find this particular way of expressing things in a number of places. Uh, so uh, it is the, kind of the standard, if you wish. Uh, uh, and as you can see here, uh, it is uh, rather demanding. Yeah, you're supposed to have metta to all directions, uh, to everyone in the whole world. Not everyone, but everything, every animal, every ghost, every deva, uh, metta everywhere. Uh, yeah, and sometimes having metta to the ghosts is very difficult. Uh, but that also is part of this. Uh, so if you ever see a ghost, uh, the right response is to have metta towards the ghost. Uh, that's always the right one. Don't be afraid, have metta instead. Uh, yeah, this is kind of the right, right path. And that's what they're there for anyway. They want your metta, that's why they're hanging around, yeah? So if you see a ghost, wow, this is kind of a double. This is really good to see ghosts, yeah? It's a really, really positive thing here because you get an access, you kind of get an insight into the nature of the world that kind of enlarges your view of the way things actually are. So be thankful, say to the ghost, thank you for coming, ghost. And here is a metta in return here. That's the right, <laughs> that is the right attitude to have for these things. So. And uh, so it is kind of an all-encompassing thing. And this is kind of the critical thing here. Yeah, it is no one, no one is left out, nothing is left out. Uh, uh, and uh, this is why I'm kind of messing around a bit with ghosts, just to make the point that everything is included uh, in this particular idea of metta. Now, so I want to talk a little bit about how this can be done, because it sounds like a very advanced uh, practice. Uh, and it sounds like something you have to develop for a long time to get to this particular point. Uh, yeah, and true enough, it is, <laughs> it is quite uh, demanding and it's quite difficult to sit, sit down and just spread metta to all directions and feel supremely happy. It doesn't happen just like that. Uh. And so metta always starts with on a much simpler kind of way. And I think this is what many people often forget when it comes to metta practice. Uh, is we don't do the basic things, we, we go straight away to the more advanced things. And of course, that is how the path does not work. Yeah? The path does not work by going to the advanced things straight away. You always have to start with the basic ideas. Uh, actually, before I go any further, I should, uh, I want just to thank Venerable Punsari for doing the meditation this morning. That was very, very kind of you. Much, much appreciated for taking over. Was it, was it good again? Did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was good? Okay, okay. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, that's great. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't met others said yes. Well, that's good. Yeah, it doesn't matter why you say yes as long as you have. That's, 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 that's wonderful. 
So the, uh, so the question then is, how do we, uh, where do we start? Uh, and the answer in the suttas is always we start with the basic things, and that is to start with metta by body and speech. Uh, yeah? So we treat each other well in ordinary life. If we can't do that, there's no way you can have much success in doing this in meditation. So that is where it starts. Uh, and uh, you find this in the suttas where the Buddha uh, is speaking to the monks, and he says you know, to the monks that you should treat each other uh, by you know your sabramacharya, your fellow, your companions in the spiritual life, uh, you treat each other by metta, by body and speech. Uh, and for you, yeah, your fellows in the holy life are your maybe your fellow people at the BGF or you know fellow monastics or whatever. So you treat everyone around you by uh, in this way by uh, body and speech. This is the first thing here. Uh, and make sure that you have integrity when you do that. Uh, yeah, that you do it uh, both in private and in public. Uh, and that you do it all the time, because if you just do it uh, uh, in in the public but not in private, then it doesn't work. It has to have an integrity to, to it. Uh, so you ask yourself, how can I be kind through my bodily actions? Uh, how can I have kindness in the way I speak to others? Uh, yeah, and, and basically it is about uh, using the four ways of right speech. Yeah, that's kind of where kindness comes in. Uh, and then adding, sometimes we just need to add more Kind of, we can add more kindness, more metta and compassion just to when we intend our speech as well, when we intend our actions. And this is one way of strengthening that metta. How can I add more kindness when I do this? Yeah, I mean, one thing is to offer someone a, a nice drink. Yeah, and there's usually a degree of metta when that happens. Yeah, it's kind of very nice. But how can I add even more metta in the, of, in the very offering of this? How can I do it with more kindness? And the more powerful that intention is in the mind, when you do that uh, act of kindness, uh, the more metta it, there is involved and the more you are developing that particular quality in your life. Yeah? How can I really be kind to this person by saying something? What is the right way of saying something with real kindness uh, coming from a really, you know, a really good place within her? Uh, and then you can kind of de you develop these qualities by thinking in this way, by being more, um, more uh, um, conscious about your intentions uh, and strengthening those intentions within uh, as you do these things. Uh. And then once you have the metta in my body and speech, the next thing is to have the metta by mind. And these are the things we have been talking about here before, how to think about people in the right way, uh, in such a way that you can always have metta and when you think about people, yeah, this is also before you do the meditation, so that your thoughts are already leaning in the right direction. Uh, and, uh, uh, yeah, so you understand people, their conditioning, you, you rejoice when people have good qualities, uh, and you do this even within yourself, uh, yeah, you're seeing the, seeing the good in other people. Uh, and then, when the body, speech, and mind come together in this way, then that is where the metta meditation starts to work. Uh, so you have to kind of practice the first six factors of the Noble Eightfold Path, and then the seventh factor, Samasati, which here can be said to include the Brahma Viharas, then that starts to actually become possible as a consequence. And that is when you can sit down and you can uh, uh, do the meditation, yeah, the metta meditation, to one direction, to another direction, etc., uh, uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So, um, uh, again, why... Do we have this kind of way of explaining the meditation in the suttas? Whereas in the commentaries the Vasudhimagga, we start off with the uh, ourselves and then the uh, the uh, friendly person and the neutral person and the enemy or the kind of the disliked person at the end. And the reason is because uh, uh, the Vasudhimagga is trying to bri bridge the gap between this very advanced kind of meditation. Uh, and the ordinary mind. That's why they start with kind of starting with yourself. Yeah, liking yourself and then, uh, in fact, the whole idea of starting with oneself is a little bit uh, dubious and I'm not entirely sure whether that actually is uh, what was intended uh, uh, in the suttas or anywhere. Uh, um, but we'll come back to that in a second. Uh. So uh, how can we get this going? Uh, yeah? Now, the, if you go back to the way this is explained in the Visuddhi Manga, in the commentaries, as I just mentioned now, you start with yourself and you have a friendly person. Yourself, I'm going to put that to one side because I'm not sure if that was ever really intended to be there. But so we tend to start with a friendly person yeah, in, meditation, in metta meditation. And there's an obvious reason for that. Uh, it's easier to have metta towards someone you are a friend 
towards. Yeah, it's kind of easy to admit that towards a friend, you want to be kind to them, you want to do the right thing. Yeah. More difficult to have metta for someone you don't really like. And that's why we have the idea of compassion there, because compassion can be used in all kinds of situations. And so if you want to do this kind of meditation, what you have to do is you have to bring to mind those qualities uh, of a good person, someone you respect, someone who is a friend, uh, someone who is close to you, uh, yeah? someone you have a, a good relationship to. Uh. So you have to bring that up first of all. Uh. And so you, you can do this in many ways. You can either think of a person that you really respect. Yeah? I don't know who it might be. I don't know. I just always like to use Ajahn Brahm as the example. Maybe I should find someone else as well. But <laughs> let's say Ajahn Brahm, right? Uh, or uh, maybe, maybe Venerable Poon Siri. Uh, or, or someone, someone you respect, someone who is really nice. Uh, and uh, then, you know, someone who has kind of helped you in a certain way, or whatever it might be. Uh, and uh, then when you see those qualities and you bring up that feeling, what does it mean to be really generous? Uh, what does it mean to be really kind? Yeah? What is the person that you really respect? Uh, and then you kind of bring up that feeling and then you kind of project that feeling towards all the beings in the northern direction knowing that there are many beings out there who have precisely those qualities yeah it's like you're seeing all the friends in the north uh, all the people you respect in the northern direction uh, and you can even make it the devas yeah the devas uh, is easy i don't know if you can relate to the devas but if you have that ability to relate to the devas uh, yeah all the devas in the, in the northern direction uh, and then there are the devas uh, in the sky and then there are the devas on the earth yeah the devas on the earth are the good people. Uh, they're also called kind of devas, uh, little devas, uh, yeah, wearing white. Uh, yeah? <laughs> These are the devas in the world. So you see all of those friendly beings in the northern direction. Uh, and you do that, first of all, by bringing up the idea in your mind what it really is to have a friend, someone you respect. Remind yourself what it means to be generous. Uh, think of a time when you really felt like you wanted to be generous to the whole world. Uh, that feeling comes up to you, you just want to give of yourself. And if you have that feeling, you know that it is a very spiritual and beautiful feeling because it's like this feeling of just wanting to share with everyone in the whole world. It's like this, uh, like your, kind of your heart opens up to everyone around you. And there's something about that which is very powerful and tangible. And you know straight away that this is probably the feeling of the Aryas, the noble ones, and those beings that have been reborn in those Deva realms and also all the good, ordinary people in the world. What does it mean to be generous in that way? What does it mean to be truly kind and caring? What does it mean to be compassionate? What does it mean to be understanding? Yeah? You bring up that feeling. Yeah? You bring up that knowledge of what these things are. And you know that there are many beings out there with those uh, uh, qualities. And then you say to the northern direction, yeah, may all beings in the north, may you be happy in the west, in the south, and you can kind of spread it around as you like, below, across, above, everywhere, all around, is what it says here in the suttas. So it's very kind of all-encompassing. Yeah. So then you can hopefully get it going. There's no guarantee you will get it going for that reason. The metta is a feeling. Feelings are sometimes notoriously difficult to give rise to because the conditions and Things may not be in place, uh, but this is kind of how you uh, get this thing started very often. Uh. So, uh, and, uh, so this is then uh, one way of doing this. Uh, so this is uh, the way that you find in the suttas. Uh. But let's also come back very briefly to the way that this is explained in the Visuddhimagga, because it's a very common way of doing metta meditation. Uh, yeah? And the idea, the way it is done in the Visuddhimagga then is the idea you start with yourself, yeah? May I be happy, may I be well. So first of all, you sit down, you close your eyes, you do the preliminary meditation, you establish mindfulness to the best of your ability. And then when you have that sufficient mindfulness, then you can, you say to yourself, yeah, the kind of the hindrances are largely, the coarse hindrances are gone. You say to yourself, may I be happy, may I be well. And you can say this kind of on every breath, if you like. Yeah? May I be happy. Huh? May I be well. Huh? May I be happy. May I be well. Huh? And um, yeah, and you can imagine that for this to work, you have to intend it. You really have to mean that to yourself. Yeah. May I be happy. Huh? May I be well. And the more 
honest and clear and powerful that intention is, that you really, really want to be happy, you really wish that to yourself, the more powerful and strong that intention is, the more likely it is that the feeling will arise. Yeah? And after 10 minutes you said, may I be happy, may I be well, then still feel nothing, right? <laughs> this is what happens sometimes. Sometimes you feel things, sometimes you don't feel anything. But it's quite common for people not to kind of give rise to great feelings. So this is again a training in learning how to do this. If you find it hard to do it towards yourself, you can go straight to a person who is a dear person, someone who's close to you, a friend, someone you respect, and you can go straight to that person. Yeah, may you be happy, may you be well. You can put in the name of the person. Ajahn Brahm, may you be happy, may you be well. May you be happy, may you be well. Bobby, may you be happy, may you be well. <laughs> yeah? The people around you, you wish them well in this way. Yeah? And uh, then maybe it is easier for you to do it in this way, starting with someone who is uh, you respect and someone who is close to you in the, uh, uh, you know, in the community around you, whoever that might be. Yeah? So um, it is interesting, again, I'll just very briefly comment on this idea that uh, it starts with oneself, yeah, which is kind of, to me, is a little bit strange sometimes, uh, because when you start with yourself, I don't know, it sounds to me that can easily become a little bit, go a little bit wrong and become a little bit kind of self-centered perhaps. Maybe not, it depends. Sometimes it can be very beautiful to wish yourself well. So it depends on how you do it. Uh, uh, but uh, I think one of the uh, interesting words found in this particular phrasing that you see here, like all around, everywhere, one of them is sabbatataya, and the word sabbatataya is often translated as to all, as to oneself. And you will notice here it is not translated like that. Here it is just translated as all around or everywhere. I can't remember which one it is, either everywhere or all around. So that's quite different. Uh, to all, as to oneself, and everywhere is quite a different feeling here. And I think that this uh, idea in the Visuddhimagga comes from that same understanding to all as to oneself. Because if you translate it like that, then it starts, then it starts with the idea of having metta for yourself, and then you spread it to all in the same way. But if you say everywhere, all the way through, like this, everywhere, all around, well, then there is no foundation in the suttas for starting with yourself. The other Translation seems to be saying that the suttas actually recommend to starting with yourself. And uh, so it depends on how you translate the sutta, yeah? whether that part in the Visuddhimagga actually is correct or not. And there was a very interesting uh, paper or little article written by Venerable Analyo a few years ago where he makes the point that this idea of to all as to oneself probably is a mistake in the Pali. Uh, and he did that through showing that there are various versions of this particular word. Yeah, it's spelled in slightly different ways. Then he did a comparative study with the Agamas, the translations into Chinese and Tibetan and everything else. In his summary, and I read the article, I thought it was very, very well researched. To me, it looked very much right. Actually, it doesn't say to all as to oneself. It seems to say just everywhere. And then this whole method of the Visuddhimagga, which seems to be based on this passage, yeah, it may be, <laughs> may be wrong. Yeah. It's, it's kind of fascinating how sometimes small little things in the suttas can actually have a repercussion down the line on how we actually think about things and think about things like metta practice. So I think that uh, the original idea probably is just to spread metta everywhere or start with the, pers the liked person rather starting with yourself. Yeah? And then from that kind of expand out to the, to the whole world. Uh, that seems to be the uh, kind of the uh, uh, more like closer to the root idea of what the suttas are actually saying. Uh, and of course, you are included in everywhere. Yeah? Everywhere you are also, so you are included anyway. You know, it's not as if you are left out. Yeah? You are part of everyone. Uh, yeah? You are not uh, uh, excluded from everyone. Uh, um, unless you are really unusual, huh? but uh, <laughs> if you are a reasonably ordinary human being, you are included in everyone. Huh? So that comes is part of this. Uh. So this is then how you how this can be done, yeah. And um, and then you. Um, do this, and the deeper your meditation is in terms of watching the breath or whatever, the more powerful will be your ability to do this kind of meditation on, uh, on metta as well. 
And eventually you kind of spread it to everyone. You have no one is excluded anymore in your heart. The whole world is included. Uh, and that is kind of where we eventually want to go. Uh, and then you have this nice, uh, uh, this nice way that it is explained just afterwards. Yeah, this is the uh, the, the kind of quality of the mind that is uh, uh, required here. Abundant. Yeah, in other words, full of something. Yeah, strong, powerful, a uh, sense of metta and kindness. Uh, expansive, mahagata. In other words, the mind is large. It encompasses kind of a, a large area, and basically everyone. Limitless, you don't place any limits. In fact, there is a way that um, the way the uh, metta is described in the commentaries is that not having any boundaries anymore. All boundaries are abolished. So in other words, you have metta without boundaries. And again, this idea that everyone is included. Uh, free of enmity and free of ill will. Uh, there's none of these uh, uh, negative qualities remaining in your mind whatsoever. Uh, this is the, uh, the idea here, and it starts with this very simple idea of just wishing everyone well yeah, in your mind. Uh, may you be well and happy. May this direction be well and happy. Building up the perception of uh, uh, friendliness, kindness, and um, seeing people you respect and care for in your mind's eye. Yeah. So that is the um, idea of uh, metta. Yeah, then we have the other Brahma Viharas, three more Brahma Viharas. Brahma Vihara literally means the dwellings of Brahma. So this is what Brahma uh, dwells like. So if you want to become a Brahma, you're going to have to have these qualities, first of all. This is how you become a Brahma, by developing these qualities. Uh, is it good to be a Brahma? It's pretty good to be a Brahma, so it, it is recommended. Uh, it's better that, well, if you can't make it all the way to full awakening, that is, that's even better. But Brahma is a good start. Uh, so um, after metta comes karuna. Karuna is compassion. Yeah? Compassion is also called anukampa in the suttas. There's three words for compassion in the suttas. Anukampa, karuna, and daya. Three words, right? We have a new monk in Amonos. His, his name is Dayalu. The Mr. Compassionate One. Yeah? You, have you met him, uh, Wayne? Yeah, met him. Yeah, he's a very, very nice young monk. Yeah. He's, and he, I don't know how we found that word, but he somehow uncovered that word from the depths of the uh, Pali canon somewhere, Dayalu. It is not a very common word at all, so I don't know how we... So he, investigative young monk, and he found this name, and he wrote to me, oh, is this okay as a, as a name? <laughs> I never heard it before, so I guess he was a bit uncertain. Uh, but that was nice. Uh, so these are three different words for compassion, and Karuna kind of is the standard word. Uh, Anukampa, Kampati means like to tremble. Uh, so anukampa is almost like you're trembling with someone else. Uh, yeah, if, you, if someone is suffering a lot and you kind of empathize with that, it's like you can tremble a little bit. Yeah, I feel it's kind of trembling inside of you. Uh, anukampa. And daya, not sure what daya is, probably another word for compassion. Uh, and so uh, here we start with metta. The second one is karuna. It is always that sequence in the suttas. Uh, and what that means is that metta is more foundational, metta is more common, metta is more important. Uh, we just looked at this long sutta just uh, yesterday, the, um, uh, the uh, sutta on the simile of the soul, and that is really mostly about metta, if you look at this. Compassion is also mentioned there, but metta is the most important thing in that particular sutta. So metta always comes first. Uh, and I think I mentioned this already, there's a good reason for that. Uh, that is because metta is always positive. Yeah? When you see the good qualities in someone else, uh, it always has a positive result when you do that. Uh, compassion, on the other hand, is a little bit more dicey uh, because compassion, you are closer to seeing the suffering in people. Yeah? So because compassion is the desire to alleviate the suffering in people, and so that's a little bit more difficult. Uh, yeah? it's, uh, if you focus too much on compassion and suffering, it can lead to maybe sadness uh, sometimes. Uh, and some people say that. They do the compassion meditation in the wrong way and they lose their energy. They lose their ability to function properly because they use it not quite in the right way. So it takes more wisdom to use compassion in the right way. Uh, whereas metta is more straightforward. Uh, but, uh, as I also mentioned before, sometimes you have no choice. Sometimes you have to develop compassion because sometimes there are people who just it's hard to have metta towards and you have compassion for them. Uh, and for someone like the Buddha, he would always use compassion would be his, most, his 
uh, biggest one because uh, he could see the suffering in the world uh, and his job was to alleviate that suffering. Uh, that's what, what he was up to. But because we are not Buddhas, uh, we have to be careful not to go too far ahead uh, of ourselves uh, and do what we can and then gradually move forward. Uh, so, very briefly then, the way to develop karuna, compassion, is exactly the same way as you develop metta. The only difference is now you, you wish people, may you be free of suffering. That's basically what you do instead. So the other one is, may you be happy. This one is, may you be free of suffering. So very similar idea, but slightly different uh, kind of words that you may use in your mind. Uh, they meditate spreading a heart full of compassion to one direction and to the second, and to the third, and to the fourth. In the same way, above, below, across, and everywhere, all around, they spread a heart full of compassion to the whole world. Abundant, expansive, limitless, free of enmity and ill will. Then we have the mudita, the third of the four Brahma Viharas, and that is often called sympathetic joy. And it is basically the um, sympathizing and the, uh, with someone else when they have some kind of good fortune. Yeah, usually on the spiritual path, good fortune, but any kind of good fortune really. really. And that uh, um, rejoicing in someone else's good fortune is really what this is about. Yeah, I'm being glad on someone else's behalf. Uh, so they meditate spreading a heart full of rejoicing to one direction and to the second and to the third and to the fourth. In the same way, above, below, across, everywhere, all around, they spread a heart full of rejoicing to the whole world, abundant, expansive, limitless, free of enmity and ill will. And uh, this is a good thing to learn anyway. Yeah, sometimes human beings are jealous, but really we should be the, be the opposite of jealous. We should have a sympathetic joy when someone else has success. Yeah, And uh, sometimes... You know, a nice way to think about it is that if other people have success, it means that we too can have success because human beings are the same, yeah? So if one human being is successful, think, wow, good on you. That means that it opens up an opportunity for me too, yeah? If you can do it, then surely I can do it as well. So well done. And then we'll, let's develop this path together. And then you develop the anti-jealousy, the anti-envy mind. And instead you have the mind which sympathizes with others. Then we have the last one. Time is running out, so I've got to go uh, just finish this off. Uh, they meditate spreading a heart full of equanimity to one direction and to the second and to the third and to the fourth. Uh, in the same way, above, below, across, everywhere, all around, uh, they spread a heart full of equanimity to the whole world, abundant, expansive, limitless, uh, free of enmity and ill will. Uh, this is the highest of the Brahma Viharas. Uh, it may seem strange that equanimity should be the highest, uh, but the reason is because this kind of equanimity is the foundation for insight. Uh, if you are completely equanimous, uh, then the mind is just looking on. Yeah? It is no longer attached to the happiness or anything like that. The happiness is gone. Uh, now there's pure equanimity left, uh, and that is the uh, supreme foundation for insight, uh, just as the equanimity of the fourth jhana is also the foundation for uh, insight in the same way. Yeah. So that is the uh, four Brahma Viharas uh, in brief. So uh, I think we have to go now, Bob. Is that right? Uh, yeah, downstairs. Uh, yeah, okay. So we're going downstairs. Uh, so uh, um, yeah, so we'll see you back up here again at two o'clock yeah, as usual. Huh? Great.